What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, what we're gonna do is another example where we have to create a stem leaf plot. Now, we already did two examples before in the previous two videos, so if you didn't watch those, highly recommend you do before watching this one because there's gonna be a lot of carryover. A lot of the tools that I used in those previous two examples, I'm gonna be using in this third example. So what we have here is the weight in pounds of 20 female tigers in Nepal that was collected. And we have to create a stem leaf plot for this data over here. So first thing I always like to look at personally is the smallest and largest observation. So if we look at all these observations here, the smallest one is this 154 pounds. And then the largest one, the largest weight is this 352 pounds. So all of the weights are fluctuating between 154 and 352. Now with a stem leaf plot, as I've mentioned in the previous videos, the leaf always has to be a single digit. It's always gonna be the rightmost single digit. So if we look at the smallest value, notice that the rightmost single digit is the four. And so what that means is that the first stem is gonna be the remaining digits, this 15 over here. So we could put a 15 right there. And then if we look at the largest value, 352 of all this data, the rightmost digit is this two and the remaining digits are 35. And so that's gonna be the last stem in the data. So notice that this stem leaf plot is going to be pretty spread out. It's gonna go all the way from 15 to 35. So filling in all those stems from 15 to 35 here, now we can fill in each of the leaves uh, depending on the data here. So starting with this lowest figure, we got 154 means that there would be a four over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through each of these observations and just fill it in. And then remember that each of these leaves here, they have to be in order, so I'll put it in order at the end. So this 231, we would look at the first two digits, 23, which would be here, and then we would put a one, 154, we already took care of. 221, that would be here. 321 would be there, 307 would be there, 234 would be here. Notice that that is the same row as this 231 here because both of these observations had the first same two digits, the two and the three. And if we fill in the rest of the leaves with the rest of the data, we would end up having this stem leaf plot over here. Now, if you look at this stem leaf plot, what is the issue? Notice that it's super spread out. And so we have an issue of too many stems, which as a result, there's too little leaves. Right, so it's hard to tell a pattern. And if you remember on the first video when we talked about stem leaf plots, if we run into the issue where we have too many stems, remember we talked about that there's gonna be a strategy to fix that. And the strategy we mentioned was rounding the data. So in the second example, we had two little stems. So the uh, data was too scrunched up and so the leaves were too large. And so we had to split the stems. We talked about that in the last example. Well, now we have the opposite issue where there's too many stems. And so we have to, do, we have to go through another strategy to fix that, it's called rounding the data. And so what we can do with all these observations here is we can round them first. We're gonna round them to the nearest 10. And then with that rounded data, we can create a new stem leaf plot. So let me show you how that works. So this 231, what we would do is round this to 230. And then this 154, we would round to 150. 
the 221 would be 220, 321 would be 320. The 307, remember if it's from five to nine, we would round up. So the 307, we would round up to uh, 310. Uh, this 234, we would round down to 230. This would be 240. This would be uh, 350. And then the 216, the six, it's uh, above five, it's five to nine. So we would round that up to 220. So what we're doing is if the last digit is from one or uh, from zero to four, we're rounding it down. And then if it's from five to nine, then we are rounding it up. And then if we round the rest of the data, we would get all of these results here. So notice now that all of these weights here, they end in a zero. And so if you think about it, really what we have to look at for all these weights is the first two numbers, because that third number now is always going to be zero. And so if we look at this new data, the lowest value is going to be the 150, and then the highest value is going to be the 350. And so if we kind of ignore the zeros, because we always know the third value, the third digit is going to be zero, we can kind of look at these as two digit numbers now that are fluctuating between 15 and 35. And so now what we can do is we can create a stem leaf plot. So if we ignore the zeros, notice that the rightmost digit here is five, here the rightmost digit is five. And so the remaining digit is fluctuating between one and three. So what we can do is, uh, let me actually bring this over here. We can do one, two, three. And all we have to remember is that these leaves here that we're gonna fill in, they are in tens, or they're getting multiplied by 10. So let me show you. If we take this observation of 150, the first digit is one, we're ignoring the zero, remember, and then the rightmost digit is the five. So we would put a five here. And so what this means is that we're taking that 15 and we're gonna multiply it by 10. So that is the actual observation from the data. But we're just kind of uh, making a short form for it. So we can make this stem leaf plot a little more narrow. Okay, so if we go through all of the data here, notice this 230, again, we're ignoring the zero, so we'll have two and three. So the first digit is two, next digit is three. 150, we already put here, 220, that would be a two over here. I'm gonna put these in order at the end. 320, this would be a two. 310, that would be a one. 230, that would be a three again. Notice that these are repeating. 240, that would be a four. 350, uh, that would be a five over here. That's that largest value. 220, there would be a two. 160 would be a six. 210 would be a one, uh, 210 again, 160 again, 190. 200, there'd be a zero here. 260 would be a six. 180 would be an eight. 190 would be a nine, 280 would be an eight. And then 180 would be another eight over here. Right, so what we did was we're kind of looking at these three digit numbers now as two digit numbers is just all you got to remember is if you take them out of the stem leaf plot, you got to make sure you multiply that figure by 10 to get the actual observation in the original data after we rounded the data. And then if we take all three of those rows and put the leaves in order, we would end up with this stem leaf plot over here. So notice how rounding the data allowed us to now kind of ignore the zeros at the end, look at the first two digits, and create a more narrow stem leaf plot. And so that's an example. If there's too many stems, what we can do is we can round the data first and then create another stem leaf plot with that new rounded data. 
and it should make, um, you should have less stems than to deal with. But notice now with this stem leaf plot that we have, there may be too little stems, right? There's only three stems here. Over here, there was obviously too many. The data was too spread out, but now there might be too little stems. Remember in the last example, we had three stems as well. And what we did was we split the stems in order to have more stems. And so what we can do now maybe is take this and split the stems. So we would actually be going back and adding more stems, but we're not gonna end up with this many stems. So if you remember splitting stems, what we did was we took these stems here and we wrote each of them twice. And so now what happens is in that, notice we have two stems with a one. In the first stem of the one, we would put any leaves from zero to four. And then over here, it would be any leaves five to nine. And notice that with a one here, there's actually no numbers zero to four. They're all from five to nine. And so we can actually erase this row here. We're not gonna be using that. But uh, five to nine, it's basically all of these leaves. So we can do five, six, six, eight, eight, nine, nine. This first two here would be all of the numbers from zero to four. So it would be all of these over here. So it'd be zero, z or uh, zero, uh, one, one, two, two, three, three, four. And then the second two here would be all the numbers from five to nine. So it'd be the six and the eight. And then the three, the first three would be all the numbers from zero to four. So it'd be the one and two, and then five to nine. So it would just be that five there. And now notice when we took this stem leaf plot and we split the stems, notice that we have a better observation of what's happening with the data. Notice that most of the data is right there, right? Kind of like on the upper part of this stem leaf plot. Remember the previous example, most of the data was at the bottom when we did that example with the Starbucks location. Uh, yeah, the Starbucks locations. So notice that we went from this stem leaf plot to this one. So we reduce the number of stems by rounding the data. And we could have looked at this, but uh, I felt like there was too little stems here. And so we wanted to then increase the number of stems, not to this many, but perhaps maybe close to double the amount. And so from here to here, what we did was we split the stems. And so sometimes you'll have to implement both strategies in the same question. Now, if you remember in the previous videos, I also talked about how we can take a stem leaf plot and we could rotate it 90 degrees and it'll give us an idea of how the histogram is gonna look. So if I take this final stem leaf plot and if I rotate it, I'm gonna erase this original stem leaf plot because it's not too useful. So if I take this stem leaf plot, rotate it, then all these numbers are gonna go on the axis. So we'll have one, two, two, three, three. And then these leaves here, instead of being horizontal, they're now gonna be vertical. They're gonna be stacked on top of each other. So if we write out those leaves, we would end up getting this over here. And so this is going to be the shape of the histogram. So if we draw the bars here, it's going to look something like that. And now notice this has a particular shape, this data here. Remember the last example, it was the opposite. Most of the data was over here on the right side. And we said that it was skewed to the left because that tail was going to the left or negatively skewed. Versus this data here, because that tail is extending out, 
it is skewed to the right. And we haven't talked about skewness yet. So uh, don't get too nervous if I'm writing this and you're not sure what it is. I'm going to have a whole video dedicated to it where um, I tell you how it relates to stem leaf plots, histograms, and all that. But this is skewed to the right, meaning that most of the data is here on the left. Another word, uh, if something is skewed to the right, is it's positively skewed. Okay, and notice that if we took this stem leaf plot here and we made a histogram, we wouldn't be able to necessarily tell that most of the data is on the left here because notice it would be kind of like symmetrical almost. Right? We would have this big part in the middle. This part is obviously larger than this one, but this part in the middle sort of takes over both of these. And so it would look more symmetrical. But after we split the stems, now we can see that most of the data is being pushed up on this stem leaf plot or to the left on uh, this histogram. This is not a histogram, but that's going to be the shape of the histogram if you were to actually uh, make one. And so now, because it has this kind of shape, what you can do is you can look at this and start to ask why does it have this shape relating to the scenario. So notice, again, what we're dealing with here is the weights of female tigers in Nepal. And so you can start asking yourself, why do these tigers have such low weights compared to some of these tigers over here? So again, remember, we're, these numbers, when you take them out of the stem leaf plot, you're multiplying them by 10 to get this data here, this rounded data. So notice that it is very possible for a female tiger to weigh if we take this, this 2 and 6, that would be 260 or 280 or uh, 310 or 320 or 350 even. That was the maximum weight from the 20 tigers that we sampled. So why is most of the weight down here? Notice some of these tigers are really light. So we got this uh, like 150, 160, 180, 190, 200. Um, yeah, 200, 210, 220, right? Why don't they have these higher weights here? Because they could definitely weigh that much. And so you could start asking yourself, like, these tigers here, where we sampled them in their locations, number one, are they all the same age? And if they are the same age, then maybe these tigers here in that location are having trouble finding food, for example. Or maybe there is more infrastructure by humans being built in that area and so there's more human interference and so those tigers are having more trouble finding food. I'm just kind of presenting some potential scenarios but the point is is that you could take a stem leaf plot or a histogram look at how the shape of the data what the shape is showing you and then you could start asking yourself why is that shape happening and then you could start looking into that scenario a little bit more in detail. So that's an example of how a stem leaf plot or a histogram could be used in real life.